Good morning. Yes, I have to go to work this morning. Um, so today is Alma chapter 34 verses 1 through 20. And Alma has finished speaking to the Zoramites. And so Almielak is getting up and he's going to start talking to them. And what he chooses to talk about. Alma was talking about faith and prayer, and now Al Mulek is going to talk about the atonement. And what I want to share is uh, when he talks about the atonement, he says an infinite and eternal sacrifice. A great and last sacrifice um, he explains to them that in their law which is just a man can't pay for another man's sins so if a man commits murder in return they don't kill his brother they don't take the life of the brother so he's saying that no man's blood can pay for another man's sin and that's why the atonement had to be an infin infinite and eternal sacrifice. And, um, well, I've got some good stuff here, but like you got to lead up to it a little bit. So, um, it talks about, um, having faith unto repentance and uh, in verse 15 it says that the the atonement um, Christ shall bring salvation to all those who shall believe on his name this being the intent of this last sacrifice to bring about the bowels of mercy <clears throat> which overpowereth justice and bringeth about means unto men that they may have faith unto repentance um, all right, so it talks about Christ's suffering and it's, it wants us to acknowledge that. And it, it says, um, to contemplate the condescension of the Lord Emmanuel in coming among mortals, enduring unspeakable suffering, though he was perf was and is perfect in goodness and greatness and doing the will of the father in all things, receiving unto himself the sins of all mankind to contemplate all of this is to empower within us the capability of having faith unto repentance. And they're saying that's the whole, the whole purpose is that we can have faith unto repentance. And then it gives a quote by Henry B. Eyring. And um, it says, Henry B. Eyring adds a compelling reason for us to hearken unto the word of the Lord. I'm going to read it all because it's good. All right. So he says, And not only does our Heavenly Father see all we do, but he sees us with such eyes of love that Enoch, who saw God's reaction to sin in the time of Noah in vision, asked of God in surprise, How is it thou ca that thou canst weep, seeing thou art holy, and from all eternity to all eternity? Explaining that he saw the terrible, inescapable consequences of unrepented and unforgiven sins, God said to Enoch, And the whole heavens shall weep over them, even all the workmanship of mine hands. Wherefore should not the heavens weep, seeing these shall suffer? God knows all we have done, and while he cannot look on sin with the least degree of allowance, he looks on us with compassion beyond our capacity to measure. When the scriptures speak of the whole heavens weeping, I think of another picture given to us by the prophet Joseph Smith. This is what he said. The spirits of the just are blessed in their departure to the world of spirits. Enveloped in flaming fire, they are not far from us. And no one understand our thoughts, feelings, and motions, and are often pained therewith. Um... And then it goes on to say, These words pain me when I think of those who I have loved and who have loved me, who are surely now among the spirits of the just, 
the, realiza the realization that they feel pain for us and that the God of heaven weeps because of our unrepented sin is surely enough to soften our hearts and move us to action. And it is surely reason enough to avoid even the approaches, the very thought of committing serious sin. And this um, kind of opened my eyes to a new way of thinking about certain things. When it says here um, that Enoch saw God's reaction to unrepented sin. And it says that God says, the whole heaven shall weep over these. Why shouldn't they weep when they see that these shall suffer? He's talking about his people, his children. He's saying, why, why wouldn't I weep over my children when they're not repenting of their sins? I have offered my son, my perfect son, I have offered him as a sacrifice and they're not accepting it. Why wouldn't I weep? Why wouldn't the whole heavens weep? So I like that. And, it's, and I also like the part where it says, He looks on us with compassion beyond our capacity to measure. When you think about when you look on someone with compassion or someone who you truly love and you just you would do anything for and your heart just swells within you, when you just you just want to make everything better for them, like take that and then multiply it beyond your comprehension and that is how Heavenly Father feels about us when we sin and you're just kind of like oh my goodness why would I ever ever sin if that's how he feels about me you know and that's that's the point when you understand that or when you try to comprehend that or try to understand that pain then then that moves you to repentance and we're going to get to some other good stuff too here. Um, so, so that is surely enough reason to avoid even the approaches, the very thought of committing serious sin. So when you're just kind of like, and does it really matter? Or like, eh, I can repay it later. Or, you know, you're like tiptoe in that line. Like, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I should click on that link. Maybe I should blah 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 who knows you know anyways loving it okay so then we go on to talking about um, the great and last sacrifice and talking about um, love and mercy and more repentance faith unto repentance and it says in here, uh, throughout the Book of Mormon, there is repeated emphasis on the theme of the goodness of God and the invitation to come unto Christ. To do this, one has to exercise faith unto repentance. The prophets repeatedly preach the doctrine of repentance. From Father Adam to our present day, the message will never change. To become perfect, we need to repent perfectly. Repentance brings about sanctification and justification through our Savior Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost. So, what what I picked out of that was from the beginning of time to the end of time, repentance will be preached. There is never a time where it's like, you guys are good enough, we don't need to talk about repentance anymore. It will always be preached. It will always be talked about because... That is what this life is for. Uh, it says, where does it say it? Light, this life is the time that is given for men to repent and prepare to meet God. That's what this life is for. This life is for repentance. Yes, to have a good time, to learn, to grow, to progress. And how do we progress? Repentance. Okay. Then it goes on and it gives a quote. By Bruce R. McGonkey. I'm a raid. Okay, so before it gets into the quote, it says, We as members of the church need to elevate our lives. What do we need to stop doing and what do we need to start doing? We need to repent. I love the first line. We as members of the church need to elevate our lives. 
Not saying that we need to be better than the rest of the world, but we need to be better than we are. When it talks about elevating our lives or becoming a better person or um, rising above it, it's not talking about rising above another person. It's about rising above yourself, being better than what you were yesterday and the day before that and the day before that. When it says elevate our lives, that's talking about I need to elevate myself from where I am today to where I need to be tomorrow and where I need to be at, at the day after that and the day after that. So, Bruce R. McConkie, <clears throat> because all accountable men are stained by sin and because no unclean thing can enter into the kingdom of heaven, a merciful God has ordained the law of repentance whereby the human soul may be cleansed and conditioned for eternal life in his everlasting presence. Repentance is the process whereby a mortal soul, unclean and stained with the guilt of sin, is enabled to cast off the burden of guilt, wash away the filth of iniquity, and become clean every whit, entirely free from the bondage of sin. To gain forgiveness through repentance, a person must have a conviction of guilt, a godly sorrow for sin, and a contrite spirit. He must desire to be relieved of the burden of sin, have a fixed determination to forsake his evil ways, be willing to confess his sins, and forgive those who have trespassed against him. That's what I need to work on. He must accept the cleansing power of the blood of Christ, as such is offered through the waters of baptism and, confer and the conferral of the Holy Ghost. Repentance is essential to salvation. Without it, no accountable person can be saved in the kingdom of God. Every man must repent or suffer. Every encouragement is given to men to repent. The very plan of salvation offered to the world is the gospel of repentance. This life is the time that is given for men to repent and to prepare to meet God. I love it. Every encouragement is given to men to repent. Do I take that every encouragement? Do I repent daily? No, I don't. Do I need to start? Absolutely. Oh, goodness. Good stuff, good stuff. Oh, goodness. Okay, I gotta hurry up because I gotta go to work. Okay, and then I'm almost done. So, repentance is not so much an event as it is a process. Yes, there is the event of baptism, the guilt being swept away, knowing one's forgiveness in regards to a particular sin in time. But there is also the continuing process of becoming. We are not yet in a state of perfection, hence we are in a state of becoming through repentance. If we understand and appreciate this, we acknowledge our unworthiness and dependence upon God. We can progress. We can become just. Those who are just will be made perfect. I loved that first little bit so much, where it says we are in, we are in a continuing process of becoming. We are not yet perfect, hence we are in a state of becoming. I love that. I love that so much. In a state of becoming through repentance. That's what I'm going to think about for the rest of the day. A state of becoming. I'm going to mull that over for a while. Anyways. That's all for now. That was 34 verses 1 through 20. And then tomorrow morning will be the rest of chapter 31. Anyways, loved it. So good. Um, I love you all, and I'll talk to you later.